This is my spicy chicken sandwich. Woo! Thank you. I've already dropped some. I'm going to show you how to do it. So, GZ, I want you to make what is the marinade and yes. will also become part of the dredge at the end, okay? So that's buttermilk, some hot sauce, and you know my favorite ingredient, hot Hungarian paprika. Whisk it all together. Yes, ma'am. I've got my chicken breast here. Now, first secret here is there's so many nooks and crannies and craggles in that chicken breast, and I would argue it's the biggest chicken breast I've ever seen at a fast food it's big. location. It's big. So it's the small. way we create that it's love. It's a real breast or the whole breast? It's a whole breast, wow. GZ. It's crazy. You take some kitchen shears, you take your chicken breast, and just kind of give it some personality. Now, I've never heard of that technique. Cut some that cuts crazy. in there, because we want some of that breading and the batter to get in there and create some nice craggles, I like to call them. Yeah, for sure. So just create moments that can happen that are going to give you some craggles. Now, don't go too far, and you don't have to go all the way through. So look, you see what I've done here? Just about six or seven cuts, you know, maybe eight around it. Create those little nooks and crannies. Scientific. Right into our batter or our marinade. It's going to become a batter in a minute. Now, you refrigerate this overnight or leave it on your countertop for two hours, OK? If you do refrigerate this, make sure before you go to fry it that you put it on the countertop for two hours so it gets room temp. OK. All right? And I bet the cutting of it, too, helps it cook more evenly because that one end is so plump and then you have the tapered end. So it exactly. kind of matches Exactly. It up. allows some of that oil to get in there and bring it to the right temperature. Yep. That's right, Jeff. You know what's up. I know. It's All right. Science. So these are the marinated chicken breasts. I'm taking them out of the marinade, that's just remember buttermilk, hot sauce, and the hot Hungarian paprika. And a lot of people who have been to the fast food place, this looks really familiar. Because when you bite into their fried chicken, there's that pink layer yeah, of seasoned uh, so that's love. That's what it is. All right, so look what's happening here. This is going into a bowl of flour. Oh. And then added to that, we're going to do some baking powder, some cornstarch. Okay. And a little bit of water, only if needed. So start, you know, giving this a nice little whisk. And if it's a pancake consistency, leave it. If you need a little bit more water to loosen it, then you're going to add that in. And I would say we probably need a little bit more water. It all depends how much of your marinade is left over. And just patting these dry, OK? Getting as much off as we can. And then a little bit more water. Yes, just chef. a little bit more. Sure. It's all about the pickle, in my opinion. A little bit more. The pickle. The pickle. the pickle with the fried. I also think the bun. And then the bun. Yeah. And yeah. I would argue that this pickle at this establishment, oh, look at that. So the pickle wow. at this establishment is just not even a typical pickle. No. It's a little bit thicker and has a little bit more chew to it. So it's your atypical pickle? It's the atypical pickle. All right, so I'm just going to get a nice internal on this. 160. You see that right Perfection. there? Perfection. Perfection. 159. It's good to take it out right now because that carryover temperature and cooking is going to get it to that wow. 160, 165. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I like to kind of keep this on crumpled up paper instead of flat. Yeah, geez. Yeah. Hit it with a little bit of salt, rise it, comes right out. Right there. And then I'm just going to show you how to dredge and get these in. All right, so chicken breasts dried off. They're wet. So I'm going to go into some flour. This is like lunacy, right? Yeah. In a good way. This Look is creating that. the craggles. You need the Craggle. crunchy, you need the craggle crunch, you this need all of that. This is as close as Jeffrey's ever getting to a fast food restaurant. Right? Into... No, I saw him at one in the drive through last night in Jersey. He, was <laughs> he does a... it in secret. Yeah. <laughs> Into our batter. Just like that? You Just fry like it? Just like that. Back into the flour. Oh, you're doing Back a crusty the crust. Triple. Oh, triple the apple. Yeah. Flour. This is, this These is... are the tricks. These are the tricks the wow. restaurants, the fast food places are doing. But it's nice to see. I mean, if you're going to have Food, make it good food. That's exactly. Fast, not right just fast. into the oil. That's peanut oil. You can also do a vegetable oil if you like, and that'll work. So I'll put one together for you. It's not gonna, it's not gonna be too bad. You do want it kind of like right when you got it, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So we've got the buns. <clears throat> they are buttered. That's what I'm talking buns, about. All right. Buttered and toasted. What's the mayo? So the mayo is very simple. It's just some mayonnaise and a little bit of that sauce from the chipotle and adobo in that little tiny can. You only need to scoop out like a little bit, like a teaspoon for half a cup of mayo. You don't want to blow your lid off. So I love mayonnaise. I Jeff? mean, to me, it's like a mayonnaise on a fried chicken sandwich. It's it's really the only thing. Mm -hmm. There's certain things I'll eat mayonnaise on. One's like a club sandwich, like crispy mm -hmm. bacon and iceberg, and others a fried chicken sandwich. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I need to have like flavoring in it. All right, now I always ask for extra pickles. So me too. Yes, yeah, so I'll give you four. Yes. One per quadrant. 
You know, the other good thing about when you are at the fast food and you ask for extra pickles, then they make it fresh. Yes, they do. That is not sitting there in the lineup. No, That's a trick. Always. Look at that, right on top. Look at that. A little bit more. I mean, that's for like two people, no? No, that's one ah, person. Ah, it's not possible. I, I, we didn't even drive ah. away. We sat in the parking lot and ate that yeah, but sandwich that's so much both food. times. Like, we are not taking that baby home. Jeffrey, have we met? Yeah. Now, then. Yes! You gotta, just like the place, you gotta get it into a pouch. Then I'm gonna close it up and give it. it to you. Oh. I'm feeling it. And that kind of steams up the bun that and steams everything. Steams up the bun, oh. keeps everything you nice me a, and give warm. Give me a napkin. I'm gonna need it. You need yeah, a give her a napkin. For this. this is you gotta put yeah, your hair you back. A, yeah. Here, can I help you with this yeah, one? Yeah, you can help me with that one. Get that out. And it's there you have up. it. It's, it's my spicy yet, right? chicken sandwich, y'all. Forget oh. what. That's it, you beauty. got the thick Here end and the tapered end. You got the thick and the tapered. Crunchy goodness. Funny. Is it close? It's better. <gasps> what? It's so crunchy and juicy on the inside. It's perfectly cooked. And the pickles, and I'm telling you, that soft buttered toasted bun, it's toasted to perfection. This is a real thing of beauty. A Philly classic with a supermarket fix called my chicken cheese steak. Chicken cheese steak. Oh. It's simple. It's simple. Okay, so uh, on my flat grill top right here, cast iron, because it's going to hold that yeah. good heat. Olive oil, salt, pepper on the onions chopped up. They're just getting nice and caramelized, but not like a real caramelization where we take hours and hours. This is a quick caramelization, medium high heat. Just looking for some char. Little black bits are okay, and a little bit of translucent or white. You know, it's all over the place. You don't need it all cooked down. So I've got some chicken over here, and that's the store bought shortcut. If you start looking in the meat section, this is brand new and it's starting to happen. You can find shaved chicken breast. It's what? shaved for you. Yeah, yeah, they do the work. I mean, who wants to the freeze the, the like chicken yeah. and then shave the chicken? So they're doing it for you. Nice and thin. Take a look at that. I usually prefer my chicken on natural, but I mean, I'll try this. Look at it. I mean, it's so nice and thin shaved. for you. So what I like to do is season it up very simply with a little bit of salt. Put in a bowl, nice couple of pinches, some pepper. One of my all-time favorite sandwiches, the cheesesteaks. Oh, yeah. I love a cheesesteak. Oh, real good cheesesteak, nothing like it. Um, so then I've got some chicken seasoning in there and some garlic salt. Just kind of go in there and stir it around with my finger. And then right here with the onions, just going to start dropping this chicken. Now, there's a lot of moisture in here, so kind of pick from the top. Don't just dump, dump it in there. So, Sunny, that. that was poultry seasoning that you mm -hmm. used? Okay. Poultry seasoning, a little garlic salt, salt and pepper. But you can sort of knock yourself out. You can put smoked paprika if you want in there. Oh, Jeezy in my wheelhouse. A little kale dust. You it know a little kale, kale dust. dust. Jeezy's throwing shade. Yo, yeah, he's throwing a lot of shade, yeah. Jeezy. What kind of tree yeah. you sitting next to? <laughs> All right, so you just kind of move this around. Nice pinch of our seasoning blend here. Don't overdo it because we've got salt and garlic salt in here. And then you just kind of get in and start moving it around. Oh. You don't want to overcrowd situation because you do want to get some color on your chicken. And you don't want to steam it, but you also want to make sure that you kind of move things and incorporate it. So I'm going to get this on there and kind of let it sit so we can get some color on like the chicken. Like at a diner. It is kind of like a diner. Or at the diner. Philly Cheesesteak Place. It's all done on the flat yeah. top. Yeah, you know Philly Cheesesteak, invented <laughs> in the 30s by Pat Oliveri. Really? Of course, Philadelphia. Yeah. Cheese was not added. It was just a Philly-style steak sandwich. Then the cheese was added in 1940s. And usually you use the liquid cheese sauce. You know. Oh. All right, so now that this is going and the steam is going to hit everything that's not cooked, I'm going to show you how to make this cheese sauce. It's really, really simple. So in the pan here... It's very easy. I'm going to add some beer. Oh, yes. you, Pass oh, that down, it open down. it up. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yes, Katie. Oh, damn. Yes, Someone's got a drink yes, of Jones Katie. today. Someone's okay. Someone like a troll for alcohol today. Right into the pan <laughs> here. About Eight ounces of beer. Then you go to the uh, cheese section. It's got that cheddar and Monterey Jack shredded. About a, one and a half cups to two cups of that. You want to get the beer hot and then add the cheese. Like but in the fondue. meantime, yeah, like a fondue. Yeah. Exactly. I've got some steak seasoning right here. I like to add into the beer a little bit of flavor. Remember that seasoning that we have with the uh, garlic salt 
and the chicken. Put that in there, or you can do a pinch of salt. That works as well. Matter of fact, I got some left over. Let me hit this. Mm. So while the beer is getting a little bit hot, and this comes together very fast, one last good move around and toss. And look at that color. Yep. When you just leave it alone and let it hang right out. There. So at the end. Oh! oh that's a waste of beer. Oh. Yeah. We've got our beer getting hot over here. It's called the old Philly deglaze right there. Add some there. cheese. As you add the cheese, whisk. As you add it, whisk. Keep going. And look how quick that comes together. Three ingredients, beer, cheese, some seasoning, some flavor. All right, who's ready to eat? Me. OK, we'll build this. All right, so we've got some hoagies. Mm -hmm. oh, that looks like a good I, bun. I'm going to give you some mayo, girl, because when I mayo. go to the shop, I like a little mayo. Yeah. Put it right in there and just kind of smear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got to have that. Yeah, you plus it also keeps it from getting cheese. soggy. When you, when you have really good, juicy chicken, you don't want it to be too soggy in there. Just come on in. Get some of that chicken. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sunny, this is this. You got to open a shop. Call it Sunny's. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. A little diner, a little short order yeah, cook. You just sold that. That's it. That's it. Just I actually eat. pride myself on making a quick, like, 15, 20 minute meal. I don't have time. I'm lazy, impatient, I'm hungry. Do you know what I'm saying? So. No, we, we never go. knew that about you. <laughs> we believe you. you believe me? Cheese it up. <laughs> Gonna cheese it up for you, girlfriend. Oh. And then right it. over the top. Oh, cascade. Cascada. Look at that. A little cheese sauce. Dude. Oh, yes. Good. Just for you, Katie? That's she gets the whole thing? Yeah, you don't get any. Now, I like to go over the top with a little, Ooh, little pickled cherry pepper. Yeah. What is that? Pickled cherry relish. Oh, you need that. You know why? Just that fat. You need mm -hmm. to get that. Oh, there isn't that much fat in this dish, right? That no, it's good for chicken. you, I think. Pretty sure. The chicken mayonnaise is, is totally. No, the mayonnaise right. is olive oil. Katie, oil. you want me to cut this in half, I'm sure. Well, I mean, you don't have to, but. <laughs> 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 oh, if you want to share. Oh, my goodness. There you go. You guys aren't getting any of this. Smile. Tell us again. There it is. <laughs> mm. Tuesday <laughs> night. Let me just knock oh, it over. Yeah. This. So I'm yeah. about. Yeah. Mm. Check. Mm. Check. Mm. Mm. Messy? Mm. Gotta be messy. Oh, girl, mm. look at your cheek. I love it. <laughs> I love the spice of the cherry pepper with that beer cheese sauce, and the chicken's just cooked perfectly, and the way that the onions are all in there with it, it's so satisfying and hearty. It's fantastic. This is these, and do you mind stirring this up? I would love to. And I'm gonna get some noodles out of the pantry here, and my lychee, some thyme. Oh, it smells good. It's just, you know, I, you know what? It's onions, a little bit of salt and pepper. How come you didn't cry I mean, when you cut the onions? Um, I have these special tear ducts. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Not at all. All right, I'm just going to sprinkle over some of my uh, dried thyme. Holy. All right, so I've got my water. It's salted. It's boiling. I'm going to get my egg noodles in and cook them till they're al dente, like you said. So right now what I'm doing is I'm building up some flavor. Remember the uh, cremini or the button mushrooms that we put in there? Yes. Our baby bellas? Slice them up, put some thyme in there, a little bit of salt and pepper and some butter, and a little bit of olive oil as well. And then uh, we just went ahead and got them nice and tender, and it's a good time to add in some flour. Onions are in there as well. Now, the flour is going to help thicken it, of course. It's going to tighten it up, add a little bit of uh, body to it before I hit it with the cream. And the good old yummy broth that's going to go in here. Chicken broth, of course, but if you don't have chicken broth, you can do vegetable broth. All right, in with the uh, mushrooms and the flour is my twist, horseradish. This is going to give it a little... Because you got the creaminess and then the horseradish type bite? Is that what you're looking for? You are in there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's not about. enough horseradish to lose the whole dish? It's, it's not enough to lose the whole dish, the whole flavor. It's not going to make your nose hair right, singe or right, anything right, right, right. like that. It's just going to add that little bit of something. Kind of like uh, a little pinch of salt in a good chocolate chip cookie. Uh -huh. It's going to be like, what is that? It's making this everything right. You yeah, know what cool. I mean? And that's what it's going to do. All right, so I got my egg noodles all drained out. Al dente. Make sure 
sure they are nice and to the tooth. And then to my pan right here, I'm gonna add in some of my chicken stock. It's a good time to do that because the flour is kind of cooked out, the flavor. You'll know it's right when it looks really gummy on your vegetables. And then I'm just gonna add that stock. And this is gonna thicken up really quick for us. And then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of that heavy cream. And that's gonna bring it to the nice cream of mushroom texture mm. that we're used to without all the preservatives. Right into the tuna noodle casserole is the egg noodles, nice and al dente. And then behind your back, I didn't show you, but what? I got the green peas in here. Yep. They're frozen, the frosted, thawed, all that good stuff. We tasted it pretty good. Yeah, it's we don't good. need any salt. Nope. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stir this up. But you know what I really need to do sure. is get the uh, tuna in. Okay. And then, um, hey, Anthony, what? do you wanna shred up some cheese with me too? All of it? Um, I'd say about a cup and a half or so. Okay. I'll let you know. What are you thinking? That's perfect. That's it? Oh, good, good, good. Okay. All right, I'm gonna get this in here, and I'm just gonna Take stir everything together. Yeah, bring okay. that over, baby. This is gonna help it be mm. nice and creamy. Yeah, looks great. Along love with cheese. the heavy cream in love here. It. Looks great. Got the chicken stock. Yep. Yum. Hey, do you wanna stir this up for me sure. really quick? And Absolutely. then I'm gonna wow you with a bread topping. How can you do that, Sonny? <laughs> well, it's very simple. Yeah, I hate to take credit for it, but it's just panko crumbs, a little bit of olive oil, yep. and some salt that's gonna go right over the top of this. I'm gonna get this into the oven, 375 degrees. It's only gonna take 35 minutes. A little bit of olive oil. I'm going to reach in here really that quick. That really does look good. Right, stir it's good, Yes. Thank I'm you. gonna get this into the oven. Yeah. And here is the turn of the lights. That smells delicious, <laughs> Sonny. Sonny, this is delicious. You like it? Very good. Thank you. My T-bone steak with easy Bernays sauce. The T-bone's already on. Just salt and pepper, very simple. Seared on both sides, on my flat top here, so none of the juices drip down into there. And I'm gonna tent it, all right? Very smart. After you grill meat or cook meat, you wanna tent it before you actually cut into it so those juices can redistribute. Now onto this easy Bernays sauce, which is really just like the child of a hollandaise sauce when you think about it. I do a one, two, three hollandaise sauce that I'm gonna zhuzh up and make it into Bernays. So the one is one stick of butter, melted. It's gonna go into my blender. Oh yeah, I'm doing it in the blender, okay? Now, to that, two egg yolks, okay? Put those in. And then three teaspoons of lemon juice. Typically, a Bernays has some white wine vinegar, but I'm subbing with lemon juice. A little salt. And blitz it. Okay. Slow it first. You want to aerate slightly. You want to bring it up. You want to go a little bit harder. Keep on going. Turn it up higher. Oh, now we're talking. All right, so now once everything is mixed in, and the blender's had a time to like incorporate some air into the situation. It's a good time to stop it and add in some of my fresh herbs. I'm gonna get this into my double boiler over here, only really because it's kind of chilly out here. But plus, we all know, once it's not warm anymore, it's not a real good sauce. You wanna keep it nice and warm. All right. Now, let me get the herbs into the game plan. Usually, you'll see like tarragon, but I love fresh thyme, so I'm gonna just get that right in there. A little bit of red onion, chopped up nice. Get that in there as well. And then some fresh chive. Why not? Get a little classy with it. I love chives. All right, got the chives good to go. Gonna shuffle those into my sauce, give it a nice fold. You know what really makes a Bernays sauce is that oniony flavor, right? So we got the chives in there, the red onions. All right, time for the steak. Now, let me get this into my little bowl here so that I might serve it classy-like. At home, I would just go straight to the table with this bowl, but we would like to present you some classic recipes today. I gotta tell you, this is perfect for a date night. And like I said, anything you can imagine hollandaise on, Bernays. So asparagus that you grill, any kind of really roasted vegetables would be great. So let me get that T-bone. Now remember, this is just very simple. Get it onto the grill. Look at how beautiful that T-bone is. And then, very easy, right over the top. Mm. The child of a mother sauce. 
Bernays. Oh yeah, all over it, all over it. And there you have it. What do you guys think? Pretty simple, right? I'm gonna show you how to make my easy four ingredient pulled pork. I've got my pork shoulder, which is also sold as like a pork butt, but it is the shoulder. Um, some of the fat, we trimmed it off a little bit here, uh, but if you get that fat cap and you like fat, I mean, hold on to it, render it down, make some sauces with it, who knows. I'm just gonna build a really quick rub for it. I'm gonna add some salt to my bowl, a little bit of cumin, so now when you're doing ingredient recipes and you're counting the ingredients, salt and seasonings like pepper don't count, oil doesn't count, but the cumin does. So we've got the pork, we've got the cumin, we've got the salt, add some pepper. I like to loosen this up so I can get some boulders, not snow. So this is gonna be a very simple rub of just salt, pepper, and the cumin. I'm gonna get some gloves on and get into the game plan here. Now, when I say rub, I mean it. Just get it up in there and rub it in. But it does have that time in the slow cooker to hang out unsupervised for hours. So a lot of the flavors will start to meld together. But look at how simple that is, huh? And listen, if you don't have cumin, you can always use like a steak seasoning or just go into your pantry and find something that you like that you think would be great with your pulled pork. Hmm? Rub it. Okay, flip the baby over. Try not to make too much of a mess. Get some of that good old rub on the top. I'm gonna open up my slow cooker and get that in. I'm gonna show you how to make the sauce. Look at that bad boy. Now to that, salsa. Got a little bit of that cumin left over, get it in here. And our secret and fun ingredient, peanut butter. Listen, I just thought this up one day and thought maybe it would work. Tried it. It works, okay. Even my brain was like, I don't know, I don't know. But it's rich. It's creamy. It adds a little nutty flavor. Peanut butter and meat actually does go very well together. And then look, just right into the bowl, right in to the slow cooker. Four ingredients already in there. All right, I'm gonna cover this up. Eight hours on high. I'm gonna set it. I'm not gonna forget it, okay? And in the meantime, I'm gonna chop up some scallions, clean up my stuff right here. Look at this. Eight hours on high, pulled pork on high. <laughs> this is definitely like a put it in the slow cooker in the morning and then at the end of the day, it's ready to go for you, so really a smart way to set it and kind of forget it. I always say it's not really like you're forgetting it. It smells so good. I'm just gonna go in here and get this out. Look how it jiggles. That lets you know it's ready to get pulled. Oh, come on, come on, come on. It's everything I can do not to eat that right there. All right, get some forks into the game plan and pull this pork. Now look how easy this is. Eight hours on high, four ingredients, salsa, the pork butt, peanut butter, and cumin. Salt and pepper, but those don't count. Look at this. Look at how tender and juicy this is. Look at that. So easy, nice and shredded. Our pulled pork. Look at that. Come on. Look at that. Put that on the table with some tongs. Now, we are not done. All of this is delicious, but we're definitely gonna need some of this juice and sauce in here. Let me just get this all out. Come in here, you're gonna have to give it a nice stir at the end. Emulsify that fat. And then look at that. You can ladle some over the top. Let it cascade, or as Jeff likes to say, cascade. <laughs> That's right. Come in here and get some of my mashed potatoes. See how cushy that was when I just digged in? Always go in for that second scoop. Can't help myself. And right over the top. Four ingredients, perfection. Pulled pork. A little bit more of the sauce. 
Come on, because I love a good ladle of sauce. Luscious. Look at that. Come on. Four ingredient pulled pork, 